Revolution Radio proudly presents, live from the heart of the Blue Ridge, Roanoke, Virginia, it's the Just Bernard Show with host Bernard Alvarez. Join Bernard as he shares topics that reveal the real matrix and empower your human experience, including world liberty, the esoteric, suppressed technologies, spiritual ascension, and human consciousness. Humanity has awakened, and our time has come to realize our full potential. And now, live from the Star City, your host, Bernard Alvarez. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Just Bernard Show here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We've got a very special uh, show today. Today is our monthly roundtable discussion uh, with some of my fellow members of the Global Illumination Council team are going to be joining me in just a moment. Actually, let me bring them on now. Let me uh, introduce uh, and welcome to the show Treva Nod, who is joining us live from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Hello, Treva. How are you this this afternoon? Hello. I'm doing very, very well. How about you? Very good. Very good. I, I have. I, I thought of you yesterday. I was. Um, I'm watching this uh, TV show. Well, it's not a TV show. I guess an online show on Hulu, and it's called Forget About It. It's a cartoon, and it's based out of Regina, Saskatchewan. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, so they were talking about it was just, they made a joke and they referred to Manitoba and they were talking about the teenage daughter's like drinking alcohol and she's like sixteen or something and she's and the dad's like, No, you're not gonna drink till you're twenty one. She's like, But we're in Canada now. I could drink if I was thirteen in Quebec and eighteen if I was in Manitoba. <laughs> what is the drinking age in Manitoba? Is that true or are they just making it's, a joke? It's eighteen. Oh, it is eighteen in Manitoba. And they're uh I don't really understand this, but there is a long time kind of like rival, ri rivalry between Saskatchewan and M M M M M M M M Manitoba. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 very strange. You know, Manitobans think they're better than Saskatchewans, and the Saskatchewans whip our asses in football all the time. So. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so the, I guess the, the reference was correct. I had to ask. I was like, yeah. is it really only 18? I wonder if it's true about Quebec. I doubt it. They were like, wow, the French really know how to party, you know. <laughs> I thought that was really cute, though. It's a really cute uh, cartoon. But um, anyway, um, let me also welcome to our show today our fellow GIC team member and, of course, a fellow host uh, here on Revolution Radio. Terry Joyce is joining us live from Washington. Man not Manitoba, Vancouver, Washington. Hi, Terry. How are you today? I'm doing good. Yes, I am in, I am in Vancouver, Washington today. But the next time we do a roundtable, I will be down in, in uh, Southern California. Oh, great. Great. Are you going to be down? Are you going back to Hollywood? Um, I will technically yes, but uh, I won't be living there. Uh, okay. it, it looks like I'm going to be staying out in the Seal Beach area for a while. Okay, well, very good. Well, good luck on the move, and may be as easy a transition as mine was to this new little place as well. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to be packing up and driving down with my cat. And uh, you, you're going to be working down on the way down, aren't you? I am. Did you, you must have seen my Facebook post? Yes, of course, of course. Oh, uh, yeah, I am actually uh, going to be working at Planet Gemini, uh, which is a uh, comedy club in Monterey, California, and that's going to be August 8th and 9th. So um, I'm not sure who I'm working with, but uh, but come on down, and if you are in the Monterey, California uh, area, um, that's where I'll be. I'll be there. All right, very cool. That's good. That's good to hear. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you get to just like uh, pause on your way down, <laughs> even though it's only pausing to work. But yeah, you know, and, and then I'm going to do that. And then I have I have uh, some family in uh, the Fresno area. My mom lives in Fresno, and I have an aunt that lives in Visalia. So after that, I'm going to spend like a little while with them. Uh, you know, and and uh, haven't seen them for a while. And uh, then, uh, you know, then I'll be back. I'll be down there. I'm, I'm excited to go home. I, I consider it uh, Southern California home. Right, right. So, uh, yeah. Is that where you grew up? 
Well, sort of. I mean, I, I, I didn't really grow up there, but uh, I grew up in Fresno. And then uh, about 21, uh, I uh, was accepted into the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in Pasadena. And so I went there to go to school. And then I, I just stayed there from from then on. So I've actually lived most of my life uh, there now. <laughs> now I sound like I'm ancient. <laughs> I was going to say your very short life, Miss uh, Twenty Nine. Right. <laughs> but I mean, I do. I feel. I feel like that's that's home for me. Yeah, uh, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. It's so funny, you know. I've been living here in uh, the Roanoke Valley now for. Oh, oh, well, when is it? I think uh, in about five days, it's going to be four years that I've been here. Actually, July 30th will be four years that I've been here uh, in the Rogue Valley from uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Talk about a big change. And, you know, to this day, I still dream about South Florida. I mean, last night, I literally dreamt I was uh, on the Hollywood Beach boardwalk. And, you know, it, 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 that will always be home for me as well. I always think of Hollywood Beach as my home. I figure I better go visit it before the uh, the, the uh the tsunami floods it and there's no more South Florida. <laughs> well, you know, let us know because uh, starting in November, like people in Winnipeg could take the direct flights down to like uh, your hometown. <laughs> oh, really? Fort Lauderdale, huh? Yeah. That would yeah. be great. Wow. Maybe I have to go to Winnipeg to get a direct flight because you can't get one here and from Roanoke. <laughs> but um, anyway, so yeah, I know, I know that feeling and it's funny because um, – I grew up in Miami Beach, but I, I can't stand Miami Beach now. I mean, you can imagine, you know, South Beach is just just way not my vibe or scene anymore. But uh, I do think of Hollywood Beach. As, you know, it, it, a lot of people have asked me, you know, what is Hollywood? What makes it so special? And uh, I like to describe it as um, think of oh, what's that crazy beach you guys have in California? The real artsy Oh, Venice Beach? Venice. It's art yeah. version of Venice. It's like Venice Beach meets Key West. Oh, nice. So it's this broadwalk area. It's all these restaurants and bars and, you know, crazy, eccentric, homeless people, you know, and, and, and of course, very wealthy, drunk people. But <laughs> well, the wealthy drunks. Yes, of course, of course. But, you know, there's a nice mix of people and everybody just parties together. And it's a really nice, it's a really great ride. Here I am giving a commercial for Hollywood Beach. I hope the Chamber of Commerce appreciates this. If you're wealthy <laughs> drunk. Uh, make sure right. you go. If you want to be a little bit freaky and and you want to get drunk with some fun crazy people, go to Hollywood Beach. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's where I go when I stay down there. I, I always try to stay down on on Hollywood Beach when I'm down there. It's a first, and it's absolutely beautiful too. You know, it's really nice and and very inexpensive. Guys, get it while you can. <laughs> There was a video I saw of you um, on on YouTube where there was a shark in the yes, water. It's on Hollywood Beach. <laughs> was it? Okay, that was bizarre. You were just yelling like crazy too. You were like, "Get out of there!" Water. <laughs> that was my last visit down there. You know, and it's really funny you bring that up because. Uh, <laughs> The Weather Channel has contacted me. They want to use that video clip for their extreme weather show or something like that. What? I'm like, what does that have to do with extreme weather? People running away from a shark, you know? <laughs> it was very Jaws, you know? I mean, it, it really was. Well, there, let me tell you the funny part about it is that it turned out it was a sick nurse shark that was trying to beat herself. And a little bit down the ways, I saw it on the news the next day, someone like – Picked it up, literally just picked it up, and scooped it out of the water, and they put it in. You know, they took it to like marine rescue or something like that. It was it was a little four foot, you know, nurse shark that was just trying to kill herself. Apparently, I don't know what she was doing, but mm -hmm. but you know, you see that fin come out of the water, and you're like, I'm oh. out of here. You know, <laughs> yeah. When you see that fin, you're like, I'm out of here. Exactly. I don't have time to find out if you're sick or not. You know. <laughs> Yeah. In your head. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that was crazy. And and of course I was like scared to death to go back in the water the whole trip after that. I'm like, I don't know if I want to go back in the water now. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well it would stop me, you know. Maybe put my toe in a little bit. I stick That's about what I did. I was like, I'm going down to my knees so I can lift my legs up out of the water and run if I have to, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll go down to my knees. That's about it. And I'll just sit down really, you know, in the shallow area. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, no. Oh man, oh man. Uh but anyway, you know, as uh, as as we're kidding around and, and and joking around today, there is a lot of um important issues that are going on in the world and today is our opportunity. I figured this would be a very good opportunity. Uh, for some of the uh, members of the GIC team, including myself, to 
to t- discuss some of the issues of of the world today, whether it be in the activist world or in the metaphysical consciousness world, and give us the opportunity to kind of have a casual discussion on certain topics that we we don't always have the opportunity to, to sit and talk about together. So I figured let's make it really controversial. We'll just do it live on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Right? But anyway, so um, today's uh, show, of course, is just going to be a very casual round uh, table discussion. And I, let me just get the – I hope this is going to be the short uh, topic uh, for today because I really don't know much. I really don't want to know much about this um, – uh, the airplane that went down in Ukraine. Yes. I was uh, I was at the gym on the treadmill with my friend, and uh, my friend's like, oh, Lord, look, another plane – plane got shot down and of course at the gym they have like every news station like you know everything from cnbc msnbc fox cnn all of them and of course every single news station is talking about it and fox is saying one thing and cnn saying another and actually i will say fox was the first one that said it was shot down and you know the first thing that came to mind the first thing that came to mind was why is there a commercial flight flying over a war zone i was like hmm that that doesn't seem right to me <laughs> you know? i was like oh let's go fly over the gaza strip today you know i'm like you know really what were these people thinking um so yeah. I, I i really i know they're trying to blame putin and 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 uh, of course, we have the the uh, the conspiracy world saying that it's a uh, a false flag. Um, I can see it being a false flag in the sense of, again, saying what I said just a moment ago, is that if you're going to fly over a war zone, you're asking to be shot down. Uh, so kind of kind of like you know the Bush administration let 9/11 happen. Well, maybe they let this plane get shot down and let them file that flight, um, that flight path that they were using. Uh, Of course, you know, my heart goes out to the people that were killed, if there were actually people on there, even though they're, you know, the news, of course, is saying, oh, there were bodies scattered for miles. You know, I'm like, really, do we need, you know, do you want to just show us the picture too, you know, Um, but, and, or were they, uh, were they actors, you know? <laughs> you just, you never freaking know. Well, and that's know. why I don't pay attention to the news when it comes to this stuff. What do you think, Terry? What were you going to well, say? Well, you know, they definitely, um, you know, showed, they spent time on, on television, um, you know, opening up a suitcase and showing the suitcase and what's in the suitcase. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I guess that's gotten, uh, some people are offended by that, that they've done that. Uh, they also are showing, uh, you know, the, the area that the bodies are being stored at. Uh, there is a, um, there's a mom, I mean, because, you know, I'm, I'm watching like little blurbs on right. TV a little bit. There's a mom that um, once her son was on the plane and, and, and uh, his girlfriend, and uh, she's asking, uh, you know, uh, Putin to give, to give the bodies back, you know, that, that why are you holding them? We, I want, you know, we want our son to come home. Uh, things like this are going on, which makes you kind of wonder, well, what's, what's all that about? Uh, but uh I don't know. You know, it, it's it's uh, it's it's strange uh, that uh, that they were flying over there, and apparently the the plane was lower than it should have been, and and there was a warning for them to get out of there, and they didn't respond, and so it was shot down. And apparently, it seems like it's 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 some sort of accident. Uh, it, it's it's hard to tell what is really happening and the purpose. The thing that makes me upset about it is uh, is, is our the, the day that it was it happened and it was on television. Our president was uh, it shows him getting off of a plane and uh, a circle with people around him with their iPhones filming him and taking pictures and he's shaking hands and he's doing fundraising and he's smiling. So I'm like, well, there's our president. That's what that that's his big statement about this. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it it just it just seems you know is is it a false flag? Is it is it something that that's gonna you know? I don't you know, yeah, it could be it could be a false flag, but I don't think that they've succeeded at it. Uh, they never seem they can't seem to succeed at them recently. I've noticed that we I think we're getting too smart for them. But I will say that um, immediately I forgot. I, I think it was one of my friends that I was talking with about it. And I, again, I've tried. This is actually the longest discussion I've had about this because I really. I, I I just don't trust corporate media at all. I, I mean, no. unless unless 
I unless like Tim Pool was there on the ground filming it, I'm not going to believe it. You know, <laughs> you know, unless someone was there live streaming the event, I, I or, you know, I'm like, I, I'm sorry, I come from the the world of live stream, and uh, I want to see people on the ground at, as. Hello. Hello. Did we lose? Did we lose Bernard? I think so. Okay. Um, well, we're here. Do so... we hear me? Oh, we lost you for a second. Oh, that's weird. Okay, sorry about that. My my uh my mute button is backwards today. I'm I'm I've got my <laughs> headphones on the other side now, so it's gonna take me a couple of weeks to get used to this. <laughs> um. Anyway, I I can't help but wonder. Uh, it's the, I just can't help but think like the media is trying to play this up into something, you know, like, oh, this is the beginning of World War Three, And they're like trying to, I don't know, more fear porn, more fear porn. That's that's all I really have to say about it. But um, I was wondering what have been some of the reactions uh, with your friends, Terry? Have you have you or your or your your people on on online? What are they saying? Uh, you know, there's. It, it seems like, like as if online, that subject matter doesn't seem to be as important to people as what's happening between Israel and Pakistan. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the Pal pa uh, Palestine. So it, it's it's not. Um, you know, that's where I'm seeing a lot of people uh, posting things and uh, you know getting inflamed in uh, discussions and arguments about it. Uh, it seems like the um, the flight for me. I mean, I'm just studying like what's going down on Facebook. Uh, it doesn't seem to be as important. I mean, I've seen some people post uh, about, uh, and I didn't even read the article, so I don't even know how legitimate this is. Uh, but it like that that there were um, AIDS researchers on the plane. Uh, yeah, so like a hundred AIDS researchers were on the plane. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen that. It just seems like people are like, oh, okay. Well, it went down. I, I, people feel slightly apathetic about it. Yeah. I feel in some ways, and um, you know, there was a. a friend of mine and in the morning we were watching it and uh and i said right away i, I looked at the television and, and of course you know it, it's not uh it's not the the, the t t today show and i'm like okay something's not right something happened and uh i said oh my god you know i because you know anytime you see a plane go down and there's a loss of life and it's happening over uh, over the ukraine you're, you're going oh this doesn't look good that's what i said i go this doesn't look good and uh and uh, the um the man that i you know take care of said well there's only only 280 people died oh, and, uh, and I looked at, I mean of course I gave him a look and he goes oh you didn't like me saying that and I go no I didn't <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know I mean so but he's 93 so yeah you know, he's I, allowed to be like that right <laughs> I guess you know when you're 93 I guess you can just say terrible things like that and I'm like it's, it's just not worth the argument it's not worth the argument right, I'm right. just here to give the pills <laughs> oh jeez you know and uh, I again, you know, I I just can't. I just hope. I just hope that because uh, I know a lot of people were very upset about it last week, and over the weekend I had minor discussions, and I was like, I really don't want to talk about this. I just told my friends, I'm like, I, I really don't want to talk about this. It's it's the distraction, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, just the news spewing more fear porn and and whatnot. But uh, I, again, I just want to bring it back to the beginning of what I said. Is uh, my my question is is what was a plane? doing flying over that and uh, it just makes absolutely no sense now here's a here's a bit of example as we change topics a little bit and this is a great way to slide into the next topic which will probably take up more uh more than half the show but we'll see um the faa is now telling united states airlines not to fly to israel well see they're smart enough not to fly to israel why wasn't this plane <laughs> Not smart enough not to fly over the Ukraine. You know, I, I don't get it. But um, so, yeah, I think this is um, – I, I feel that this latest attack on Gaza, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the Israeli um, – the state of Israel and their so-called leaders were not prepared for the backlash that they're getting this time around. Uh, I noticed that social media is everyone is on Gaza side this time. I think everyone's had enough is enough. Mm -hmm. um, we've got Naomi Klein, who is uh, who is a Jew, uh, saying that it's time to boycott Israel the way we boycotted South African uh, apartheid. 
Um, you know, so when we're hearing things like this, especially um, with the efforts that, of course, Israel is making, you know, of course, they have their little trolls on social media. We already had a couple on on the GIC. I'm like, oh, Lord, here we go. Another troll. Let me see. Where are you from? Miami Beach. And your name is, you know, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, OK, but, um, you know, just blindly siding with, you know, of course, uh uh, you know, Israel does no wrong. Israel does, Israel's right. been persecuted. They threw a rock at me, so I'm going to throw a missile at them. You know, that kind of mentality. <laughs> but um, I, 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 again, going back to the FAA, I was like, wow, really? So now we're smart enough not to send we're, – we're being smart enough not to uh, allow – they're saying FAA tells U.S. airlines not to fly uh, into the Tel Aviv airport. So – you know, it goes to show you something is being – someone's actually paying attention this time because we never usually pay attention. Uh, what what has been your take on uh, – either of you, Terry or Treva, what has been your take on what's been going on? I know that it's gotten to the point where I literally – as much as I support uh, the uh, Gaza and, and ending the apartheid of Palestine – uh, it's gotten to the point now where it's like it's just one post after another, after another, after another on social media mm-hmm. that I'm going out of my way to find other content and post it just to break up the monotony of it. And don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful. I'm like, wow, look at this. People are finally, finally paying attention. Uh, are you seeing the same thing? Is is 90% yes. of your posts being about Palestine these days. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of posts about it, but at the same time, uh, you know, I, I mean, and again, I look at Facebook as, you know, it's it's the law of attraction. So most of the people that I seem to be connected to uh, or that I like their stuff or whatever are on the same page with what I feel, uh, you know, is going on. Uh, I see a lot of people uh, be, be in, you know, seeing Israel as being the, 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 the like, hey, you're not you're not doing right here. And uh, and getting the bigger picture, but in my personal life, my personal life, uh, people that I are in my immediate contact, not online, uh, are are really buying into the other story that uh, that Israel can do no wrong, and that uh, that uh, that they're the victim, and that Palestine is striking out at them, their little rockets or whatever they're going by, and the mentality of like, well, we can we're going to go whoop them down because they they're out of line, and there's that kind of stuff that just makes my stomach churn. Yeah, yeah. So. No, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, is, is it, is it who, I mean, it seems like there's a, a group of people that get it and, and I still feel personally kind of scared in a personal level to say, well, I don't think uh, Israel's innocent and, uh, you know, and because then I feel that I'm going to be targeted as being a person that's anti-American and anti-Israel and anti-Jewish because there's that, there, there's that edge too, because some people are that stupid. Oh yeah, absolutely. I hear that. I hear that. Um, we get that. Well, I get that all the time. <laughs> actually, <laughs> uh, Treva, what is going on in Canada? Is anybody? Uh, I, I know you're aware of the Palestine situation. Yeah. What is being What is being said among either your friends or on 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 Canadian social media? What's being well, said? I see a lot of people, you know, in my feed on the internet, posting stuff about. Uh, about this, I'm going to be very honest and say most of the stuff I'm seeing is like incredibly graphic, like people showing pictures of dead children and stuff, yeah, which yeah. kind of like turns you off. But then I, one of my people I actually know here in Winnipeg posted this lovely video of this elderly Jewish man that survived Auschwitz and his yeah. thoughts on it and he hit the nail on the head when 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 he said the Israeli government and then the military are behaving rather are behaving like Nazi Germany yeah, yeah. he saw the exact same thing and what I'm also seeing is a lot of Jewish Israeli citizens rising up in arms and saying in videos, how dare you bomb the Palestinians in my name? I'm dis- disgusted with you, which is, which I think is, is very awesome. I think it's beautiful. Absolutely. Because when, when people say, are, say anti-Israel, to me, that you, you kind of like have to realize who is, is 
is, is who are doing these bombings and who is supporting these bombings. I feel it's the Israeli government and the Israeli military, which is heavily influenced by, I guess, it's what what was said by their um, not not so very good best friends, these uh, American militaries or governments, the people way high up, I guess, the global elites, if you will. So the Israeli citizens don't want this at all. And, you know, I guess that's my thoughts on it. Right, right. And uh, again, I just want to point out how, how happy I am to see, uh, because of social media, we have the ability to see citizens... Uh, of Israel to say we don't agree with our government. You know, the same thing happens with us here in the United States. I mean, so many of us are constantly, we have to remind, like, you know, the Middle East, we have to remind, you know, like Europe and, and Greece and all them, we don't agree with our government, you know, uh, you know, oh, you Americans, you're all stupid. No, 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 that's our government, you know, hate our government, we don't like them either. And it's nice to see that finally there is a, um, a movement in Israel saying the same thing. It's like uh, we are we are not uh, blindly supporting this regime and their actions that they're doing. Uh, there is a big difference. You know, people automatically say that if you – well, there's so much dynamic behind this. I really don't want to get into the, the subtleties of it until we go on break, which we're going to go on in just a minute. Uh, but I will say there's so many subtleties that people are not aware of. I mean we have everything from – a situation that if you go against Israel, you're anti-Semitic. No, I'm anti-state of Israel government or what they're doing, the actions. Uh, then we have those that are like, if the Jews are standing up for the for themselves and standing up for Palestine, then they're looked at as self-hating Jews. And I mean, there's just so much, you know, emotional blackmail that's surrounding the situation. We'll be right back after this uh, brief commercial break. And now, back to your host, Bernard Alvarez. And welcome back to the Just Bernard Show here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We've got a very controversial show for you today, uh, more controversial than usual for us, even though we're always trying to push the edge of consciousness and politics here. Uh, on the Just Bernard Show, uh, we do we are having our roundtable discussion today, and joining me uh, for today's show is Terry Joyce, a fellow Global Illumination Council team member and fellow host here on Revolution Radio, and of course, our assistant producer and assistant uh, director of the GIC, Treva Nod, is joining me. Before the break, uh, we were just starting to get into the 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 details of the situation in Gaza, and. Um, I wanted to start this segment uh, talking about why it's so difficult for us to to be honest about it. Um, I know Terry had said, you know, she has concerns about, uh, you know, supporting uh, the end of the apartheid uh, due to so much overwhelming fanaticism that Israel can do no wrong. And that's really what it comes down to. Uh, we're, we're dealing with a situation that over the last, what is it now, 60, 70 years since uh, the Holocaust, that um, we it has been ingrained into literally our spirit, our DNA, our breath, and everything that we are never allowed to say anything negative about the Jewish people. And, and this is, but that is the point. Uh, I feel that uh, the the state of Israel is using that uh, that guilt you know we have this and it's true we we do have a collective guilt those of us that, that feel bad about what happened like those of us who are compassionate uh, over something so tragic and as genocide of course we feel uh sad for it and we feel bad that it happened and and you know it, it was a terrible situation in history and we never want to see it happen again but yet uh, collectively those of us on the planet who are aware of it and who sympathize with it, we have this, uh, for lack of a better term, a cognitive dissonance, and I love throwing that word around because it is very common in today's world, this cognitive dissonance that 
okay, my my mind is saying I'm not really allowed to say anything bad about Israel, those poor people, what they've gone through. They finally have a home. Uh, they've been persecuted for so long. Uh, that, uh, But our gut is telling us, boy, man, they're really doing a number on those Palestinians. Boy, you know, that doesn't seem right. You know, so here we have our head telling us one thing. And we have our heart and our gut telling us another thing. And people are, are very confused. They're very, um, uh, I well, I don't want to say brainwashed, but just, again, just so used to the idea that we're never allowed to say anything negative about Israel, especially if you're a Christian, especially if you're a Jew, especially if um, – uh, you're, you know, you believe in the idea of the Holy Land and whatnot. Uh, a good example. I mean, I just saw it today, and I just it, it turned my stomach. Uh, I was at the gym this morning on the treadmill, and uh, on one of the televisions is Pat Robertson doing this whole. Of course, thank good, I I couldn't hear it. Thank goodness, but they have the, uh, you know, the captions at the bottom at the gym. And I'm seeing Pat Robinson just doing this whole parade of, of yay, Israel, and that's the Holy Land, and this is the way it's supposed to be because this is what the Bible said, and they're, you know, parades, and then people kissing the ground in Israel and carrying the Torah and, and Israeli flags, and just this whole spectacle of yay, Israel, and yay for the scriptures, and yay because this is where Jesus is coming back, and they have to secure the land for Jesus' return, and Oh, my Lord, talk about a convoluted, sick thing going on. Uh, all, all these tentacles coming out of the situation, these tentacles that envelop people's minds, envelop people's spirit, and, and, and just confuse the hell out of everybody. And um, so we have that to deal with. You know, here we go. We have that to deal with. Uh, we have the fact that... Um, you know, we're dealing well, – then we're looking at – then we're looking at the situation, those of us that have been aware of it. We're looking at the situation that these people in the state of Israel has put a wall around Gaza. Uh, these people have nowhere to run, nowhere to go. Um, they're not allowed to leave uh, that area. I believe – geez, I mean – what is it, maybe like 300 people a day are allowed to go back and forth to get supplies? You know, for, uh, let's see, the population of Gaza in 2011 was 1.6 million. Half of them are under 18. So, you know, there's going to be some angry youth stuff going on there. Um, let me give you some of the facts here. 38% of Gazans live in poverty. Um, 26 of the Gazan workforce, including 38% of youths, is unemployed. 54% um, of Gazans are food insecure, and over 75% receive um, aid through the state. And I guess that's through Hamas, from what I understand. So, I mean, there's it's, a, it's poverty. Somebody had said it beautifully the other day. It's an open-air prison. And we're looking at this this bully of a state that has encircled them, not allowed them to leave, and decides every once in a while they're going to throw bombs in there. So the reality of it is, is that our heart is breaking. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. I, I know a bully when I see a bully. And and let me let me give you some of my background before I, I go much further before I start getting all this hate mail. I grew up in North Miami Beach, okay? I was the only – my family was probably one of the only Latino families in a predominantly middle-class Jewish neighborhood. I went to a predominantly Jewish school. I went to tons of bar mitzvahs. All of my best friends growing up were Jewish. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot of my friends say I have a little bit of a Miami Jewish accent. And yeah, I do have a little bit mixed in with the Southern thing going on from Roanoke. But uh, – so I am. I, I love. I love my friends, and I love all the Jewish people that I grew up with, and I love the food, and I love the culture, and and, and so it, for me, it's not about the people. For me, it's not about the culture. For me, it's not about the religion. I, I, I had. Just, I have a problem with all religion, quite honestly. So it doesn't even matter. <laughs> you can be Jewish, Christian, whatever. I'm gonna have a problem with the <laughs> idea of organized religion. But as far as the idea that, um, you know a specific uh, 
type of people or race of people are evil or should be hated. I am 100% against that. And, and I feel a lot of compassion uh, for my friends that have been affected. I know, I know I have friends that have family that are close to the border that, yes, their houses were hit with missiles. But the idea of a missile that put a crack in their roof yeah, of course that's very scary. Of course that's very scary. You know, if somebody, you know, my, my house got hit with a car and there was a crack in the wall back there for about a year. I don't know if you guys remember that online, but, uh, you know, so I know that feeling. Your house gets hit, your house shakes, and there's a crack, you know. These missiles that Palestine is shooting is nothing, nothing compared to what's, what uh, Israel is shooting back. Israel is shooting back with white phosphorus. They're shooting back for these, what are these, flechetti things? I forgot what it's called now. And they're murdering tons of people. Sure, they're throwing rocks back. You know, Palestine's throwing rocks back. They're throwing these weak little missiles that barely cause any damage. I'm sure maybe, what, 20 people have been killed compared uh, to what's going on. So you can just see there is just such a big difference. There is a double standard, and that's what it comes down to. And I think that's why... I'm rattling on about this because I have empathy, I have compassion, and I am about human rights. I am about righting a wrong, and there is something very wrong going on over there. And, uh, you know, if you're Jewish, please, no, I am not against anybody that's Jewish. I'm not against any human being. I am against a state that is literally bullying, enveloping, and started, and has created this this living apartheid again we're in the 21st century for god's sake you know i i thought we gave up apartheid back when was it uh the late 80s we got rid of uh, the south african apartheid or early 90s you know we should be way beyond this i saw some people had uh, some issues with oh well you know these muslims they they hate women or and, uh, they'll kill you if you try to convert and to, you know that's muslim muslim extremism and what i'm seeing from Israel is Israeli extremism. So any extremism is going to be nasty. Of course, I don't support uh, Muslims hurting women or hurting gays or, or anything like that. That, that. That's not the issue here. The issue here is the idea that we have an apartheid situation and uh, we need to start being honest with ourselves. Is this uh, what I don't want to say we need to pick sides, but I will say we need to pick the side of life and the side of liberty and the side of justice. This has nothing to do – for me, this is not a religious situation. For me, this is not a racial situation. For me, this is a war situation being bullied by someone who has more guns and more missiles than you, and that's what it comes down to. We have to look at this as a situation – that is a state against a region that they're just trying to wipe these people out. I don't want to go as far as saying genocide. I'm seeing that word being thrown a lot. I don't know what constitutes, constitutes genocide, but um, uh, I, I will say that um, you, you know, if we were talking like a million, two million people in, in, in a couple of months, then yeah, of course it's going to be genocide. But, you know, the way that the Israeli state is doing it, they're doing 100 here, 300 here, every few months, you know, a couple dozen more. So maybe it's a spread out genocide. I don't know. But, uh, you know, the reality of it is, again, this is not a religious thing. This is not even a, uh, a country thing. This is, a, this is a, a bully state that has literally oppressed, is oppressing another people. And that's how, that's the way I see it. And that's the way that, uh, as an activist, it really calls to me to say something about it and to literally take some time out from my radio show to bring, up, to bring it up and hopefully awaken other people to the idea that there, there is something not right here. And I, I'm not saying that, you know, there's going to be an easy answer. Actually, I did have an easy answer. <laughs> I did have an easy answer, and I'm, and I'm sure none of our truther friends are going to like it. But I, I was saying it earlier today. I was like, you know what? If you can't play fair, I'm taking it away from you. And I, I think perhaps, and again, the truthers are not going to like this. Why don't we just take it away from Israel and Palestine, make it a United Nations uh, territory, period. Sorry, ain't nobody's country. This is now a, 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 a neutral territory owned by the United Nations. <laughs> 
I, I what you know that's a quick simple political solution anyway i've gone on for about 10 minutes here terry what are your some of your thoughts on what i'm saying here well uh you know i i definitely agree with you on uh the uh, religious uh, aspect uh you know that uh I mean, not to say that, uh, you know, that there's no God or, or I believe in spirituality, but but again, looking at everything, we can see that religion has been implemented to control us and really put us at odds with one another. Uh, there's also the fact, and, and we've been socially engineered. I, I, that's my word. You say cognitive yeah, uh, yeah. dissonance. I say socially engineered. Yep. Because Hollywood and, and uh, everywhere that we've been raised, you know, it's been the Holocaust. And, and I'm not saying, again, it's tragic. And I, and I, and I, and I sympathize with what, what happened to, 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 to Israel and the Jewish race and, you know, everything. I mean, it, you know, we should, I don't feel that anybody, for whatever reason, sh should have to go through something like that. We need to, we need to, to ascend beyond treating one another in that in that type of fashion but from what i have been studying from different sources uh that it, one of them actually is um i actually read another one of our revolution radio hosts book uh stephen d kelly on uh, cities under the plane and uh there's a there's a part in it where it, like one of the people in the in the, in the book uh it, it says that uh, that the Jewish, the Nazis and the Jew, Jewish, and the Zionists are together. They're together. They're they're even though there's there's you know this stuff going on that that they're they're really somewhat on on the on the same page as what what is what what is being done to us. Uh, and I find that to be, I, and it's not the only source that I have I have um I have I've read this at. Um, I even had my own strange personal experience of of um, of something, and I'm going to go really briefly about it because it's it, it's kind of odd. Okay. But um, I was at a um, I was at a place called Jumbo's Clown Room, which was like which is kind of a bikini bar, and I was I was celebrating a, a, a it was like a cast party for a film that I worked on, and uh, somebody slipped a Mickey in my drink. OK, <laughs> and um, I, I kind of I had a very odd reaction to it. And one of the things that I happened to scream out and I remember it was uh, was I said something like um, I said, uh, I'm Hitler, I'm Jewish, I'm an angel of mercy. And I did not know why I would say something like that. Uh, and it, it's, it's weird for me to talk about. But um, and, and my analysis is, is, you know, that uh, I, I'm an empath, so I feel a lot of energies and rooms yeah, and things yeah. like that. And so I think I felt that maybe what was happening to me is because I was on this drug, I had no censorship. And so I was just like screaming out things that that were, you know, like they were just kind of coming through me. Right, but, right. but why would I say I mean, and this is at a time where I was not. I'm not, I would not be having this kind of conversation anywhere because I, I was not awake this way yet. So now that I'm like reading other facts, I can only go into my own personal experience and go, well, what, what's that all about? <laughs> like, why, why would that have come out of me when there's other information on the outside of what, what's happening? I think we're in for a really big deception of what is going on and the manipulate, like for what, what is the, the, the evangelists, you know, going on about, uh, you know, this and that, and this is biblical and that and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's like we've been programmed to have this event happen in, in human history. And now it's being taken place. And it's like, well, look, we told you it was going to happen. We told you this is how God was going to be. But you know what? I still want to know, well, well, where's the wizard behind the curtain? Because of course, none, yeah. of it, none of this is making sense. I want to know what the true story is here. And what is really going on? It, you know, is the, are they all in on it? You know, uh, you know, is is this taking place so that we'll have some other grand thing happen? Why is it that America is so entrenched with Israel? You know, I mean, isn't it our ammunition that they're using over there? We've been in bed with them forever. Yeah. And yet you don't hear. I mean, what is the president saying about this? It, it, I, I don't it seems like it's it's happening. But 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 then again, I, I mean, are we going to participate in it? I mean, what? 
what, you know, I mean, it, and it, it's just, it's horrible. I find it horrible to see the picture, see pictures on, on Facebook, to see children uh, not be alive anymore, or to see them in pain, crying, you know, the look on their faces. I don't think a child should have to have that kind of experience in their life. And, 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 and where is, where is our compassion as, as people to say, I don't care what your problem is. I don't care if you're fighting over some land or you've got some dictator that's telling you what you know what our governments need need, need to, to to go. Why are people suffering? Why yeah. should a child have to suffer amongst psychotic people running things? That's how I feel. About ah, it. beautifully said. Beautifully said, Terry, and 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 and, and I couldn't have said that better because. That's for me again. That comes. That's what it comes down to. This is a, a human rights situation. This has nothing to do with picking sides over Jews or Arabs or Palestine and Israel. This is the fact that there is uh, murder, atrocity, uh, and so much more behind the scenes that we don't know about. You know, Laura Eisenhower was on the show last week, and uh, she didn't even get into the details like we're getting. She said there is there is even more going on behind the scenes. It's kind of what you said. And it has to do with the, um, you know, the ruling families of the quote unquote uh, global elite uh, wanting resources and wanting uh, metaphysical portals and energy uh, centers that are in that area. Now, if we want to move that discussion into that place, I mean, talk about metaphysical energy centers and portals that, that whole region is, is brewing with uh, the birth of well, at least three or four religions and, and more from that uh, due to the energy that's there. But I can't help but wonder what – it's been so violent. I don't know if I would want that energy, but I guess the uh, global elite families do want that violent energy and have control over it. But that's something – that's the other thing, you know, the man behind the curtain. What is going on? Uh, every war is funded usually by the same people, you know. So are, are we also funding – are we also giving Palestine little leftover rockets and whatnot, you know? Are we channeling uh, uh, weapons to them somehow, some way as well, you know? So there's always some – somebody somewhere is going to profit off this. Uh, no matter what side wins, and that's what we need to think about. And as an activist and a, and a humanist, we need to look at the situation as a human rights issue. Like you said, why are we allowing uh, these children to have their parents killed in front of them, their homes destroyed, uh, and uh, not really say anything about it, and just allow giving the state of Israel, and again, the state of Israel, this has nothing to do with Judaism, the state of Israel gets a free pass every single time and just because somebody was a victim in the past doesn't mean that that's justified for them to do what they're doing that that's how i look at it you know and and that's the big cover-up oh i'm a victim i'm i'm doing this because i'm the victim no you're not yeah and the, and again the and, and it's funny because the same arguments are repeated over and over again which of course shows that there is social engineering involved when we hear the same uh, argument, well, doesn't Israel have the right to defend itself? Have the right to defend itself? You already created a wall around these people. You've cut off their food supply. You've cut off their commerce. You've cut off their freedom to travel. You've basically oppressed them and locked them up in, a, in, a, in an area. Uh, I forgot how big it is. Um, I think it's like twice the size of D.C. or something like that. But I, you, what, you're, and you call that defense? Well, it's, like, it's like cornering a cat – and, and, and getting mad when the cat uh, uh, slashes its paws at you or, or scratches you. You corner these people in, for God's sake. Defend yourself from what? You can blow them up a thousand times over. Yeah. So they threw a couple rocks at one of your, at one of your soldiers. Big deal. Of course they're angry at you. You're riding your tanks through their freaking uh, hometown or whatever. <laughs> Anyway, I, I'm getting all. I'm losing my my focus here because I'm getting a little bit uh, emotional and 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 sim uh, well, empathetic and compassionate with the poor people. Anyway, when we come back, we're going to close this discussion, move on to a new topic. And now back to your host, Bernard Alvarez. 
And welcome back to the Just Bernard Show here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. And, uh, of course, today we are doing our round, monthly roundtable discussion with some of our GIC team members. Terry Joyce and Treva Nod are joining me today. And uh, Treva and Terry and I have been discussing uh, the Gaza situation over the last uh, segment. And I just wanted to... Uh, uh, get ready to change the subject, but uh, it's funny, during the break, uh, I went to click on to my Facebook page, and I got a uh, status update from one of my favorite people, another radio host from down under in Australia, uh, Max Egan, uh, is putting out, put out this huge, well, I won't say huge, but a pretty long apology uh, for uh, his, uh, his rants over the past couple of weeks. Uh, he's uh, of course, been very emotional over this Gaza situation, and I can relate uh, that we've probably, including myself, have offended those uh, that don't see the clear picture yet and are taking uh, uh, the idea of not respecting the state of Israel for these actions uh, a little personally. Uh, but uh, I'm sitting here reading this, and um, let me just read a little bit of what he's saying right here. Uh, and I can relate to what he's saying. I am drained of emotion. I have no tears left to cry and no words I can speak to convey my feelings. I've heard of massacres before. Unfortunately, they occur too often and the lives of each one lost in these events are all of beauty and value, but I have never been so close to it. Have it knock on my door this way. I was supposed to be in Gaza this month for Ramadan and I would have been there, but for a four day window when, the or when I gave the organizers of the tour in Europe the go ahead, to book a flight ticket as it didn't look like I could get into Gaza. Four days later, I was approved for entry. Wow, he was on his way to Gaza. Had I waited four more days to get that ticket, I would have been in Gaza with them now and probably be as dead as they are. I can only accept that there is a purpose in that and that I've been spared this end for a reason. The wanton slaughter of gentle and innocent people, uh, over 900,000 children, has been a huge blood ritual. I believe that I have lived through their deaths so closely and so vividly, but from the safety of my home for a purpose. I'm a very different man from the one I was two weeks ago. I am stronger. I am more determined than I am fixed on my purpose. I believe I have lived through this genocide so closely and so real because I am the one who is to bring their final story to the world because the world has changed these last two weeks. Everything is different now. The big game has now begun. And if people do not look up and pay attention right now, then the way of Palestine will be the way of the world. Wow, that got me goosebumps. Yeah. Do you, you got you know who uh, Max Egan is, Terry? Don't you or? No, I oh, don't. Oh, girl, you gotta you gotta check him out. He is awesome. He is one of he is one of my favorite uh, radio hosts from <laughs> Australia. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have a lot of his work featured on the Global Illumination Council. You've probably seen it and don't realize who it is. Okay. But check him out. Check he is out. he's awesome. He is really awesome. But he's, he, he does the same work that we do, except uh, down in Australia. And uh, he's been uh, doing uh, some more tours around, actually going up into Europe and UK and whatnot, and it looks like he was heading to Gaza. So very, and we applaud you, Max, for the work that you're doing. Thank you for that. And uh, very well said. Couldn't have said it better myself. So speaking of the way things are, let's change... Um, Let's change the vibe a little bit right here because uh, we are in a very interesting time in history for the planet. We've we've had it's 2014. Yeah, we lived through 2012. You know, <laughs> we've moved on, and I believe, and I'm sure uh, most of us on the call here today on the show believe that humanity is going through some type of awakening experience. Um, the reality of it is is that the more that we awaken. Uh, the more the other side is going to fight back to keep us uh, consciously oppressed, uh, stupid, numb, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I believe that's what's happening. Uh, I believe Gaza is one of the uh, many, many uh, things that are going on with the elites and trying to uh, suppress the global consciousness and keep us divided. I mean, what a great divider this has become for them. I'm, I'm sure that uh, I've probably lost friends. I've probably lost fans. I've probably offended many, many people who used to care, care about me and look up to me. Uh, but for me speaking my truth, uh, perhaps uh, this has been a bit too divisive uh, for many people. 
And that's probably why you've kept your mouth shut a little bit, Terry. <laughs> well, you know, there, there's time. <laughs> you know, I've kind of, well, I haven't today, but, <laughs> but, uh, but there, I mean, I have posted like a few things on Facebook. There was a, a post that you had uh, explaining uh, what is actually really happening, what, what the past history is between Israel and Palestine and what's going on. Uh, there was, it was from, I, I'd seen the video, um, uh, going through the the timeline um, from somebody else and right. then you know you posted it too on the GIC yeah. and I shared it in my uh, you know on my uh, timeline I've, I've gotten in, in I've been observing I've been observing a lot of things um, there's some days I'm going to be really honest with you um, sometimes post lately I've been posting things and it's been getting people inflamed and there's all this dialogue that goes on and sometimes emotionally I just feel like I don't I can't deal with yeah, that, yeah, that good day. For you. I'm like you know what I'm just I'm with you guys but I'm I have too much to do and I'll spend three hours you know going through comments with <laughs> yeah, on, yeah on defending a point and so you you make a big commitment to doing something like that and yeah. I'm, and I'm I know that I'm going to be doing that in the future um I'm still formulating my way of presenting it to people uh as as and I maybe that sounds odd no not at all but I'm like, how am I going to come about this? Uh, you know, I've got friends that I know are really asleep about it. They're very pro-Israel. Uh, and uh, and then I have friends that aren't. And so, um, yeah. I, well, first- you know what? I don't mean to, to, to interrupt you, but just to throw in a, a thought here, uh, it's that uh, you're a comedian. You could throw it in the way Jon Stewart does. Have you been yes. watching any of Jon Stewart's videos on Gaza? No, I oh, it's, he is brilliant, and he's Jewish, so he has been doing it brilliantly. Uh, oh, wonderful! Comically, but yet getting to the core of the issue. Well, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. Is like, well, how am I going to say this? Uh, um, so, yeah, it's it's been it's been emotional for me just to observe it right now, and I'm I'm just I'm just looking at it, right? Uh, you know, so that you can have I, I guess present it or say it in the way that I, I really want to say it. Uh, but yeah, in personal in personal areas, you know, I'm 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 a little paranoid right now um, in some ways because uh, because I've been um, a, you know a, a freedom person and I've marched and uh, you know I'm pretty sure I've got pictures on file and things like this right. because you know I was around the heat and um, been talking about things on the radio for a while and uh, you know it's sometimes like in my own personal area you know like for example like where I'm living at you know. One of the reasons why I do want to move, to be really honest with you, is because I really want to live near people, I mean, in the physical realm, that actually understand what I'm talking about. Right, right. And they are somewhat awakened. Um, where where I'm at right now, I feel that I'm mostly surrounded by people who are not. And so if I were, sometimes I feel if I really were to, like, speak my mind with them, that I am just going to get this backlash and you know who knows what they're what i'm going to be pointed as being how long have you been there so i actually kind of feel unsafe in some ways how long have you been there um i've been up here for two years okay okay so and 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 you know they're they're i mean again this is another part of the country and i'm not saying that not i mean there are people who are awake and aware but there seems to be a large amount of people that i'm in contact on a personal basis that are not and that's going to be everywhere, though. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I, I can speak I can speak from my own experience here with Roanoke. I'm very happy that there's a big there's a big activist community here. Now, would I say that they're awake and aware? Um, maybe half of those activists are. And and, you- and among my friends, maybe one tenth are. You know. <laughs> it seems though that the more the more I don't know. See, California is kind of it, 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 it's got its issues, but in, it's, in some ways it is, uh, you know, kind of a, an open minded state in some ways. Uh, you know, if you look into the uh, I could be wrong. I mean, someone might want to argue with me, but, you know, in, where I used to live at. You know, if you were gay or, you know, if you were, you know, if you didn't, you know, it, it was. It, it, the norm was not the norm or the standards that are in some place like, let's say, Montana. Right, right. So, you know, even as a comic, you know, coming from, com- you know, creating out of where it's it's a metropolitan area and 
all, all, all it's a mecca of of creativity and the entertainment being spewed out into the rest of the world. And then to go to someplace else uh, and talk about certain things that would have been completely gotten and understood in California is not necessarily understood in Montana. <laughs> and and I and I kind of feel that I mean again like I live in a state that you know legalized marijuana, so we're ahead of the game and in, in, in for recreational use in, in terms of California. But my feeling is California is not legalizing because there's too many people making money on the underhanded side of it, and they don't and they don't want to lose their money. That's my take. Right, on it. of course. So, you know, there's these things that are happening, like one state has certain things that are cool and another one doesn't. But, yeah, in my immediate, immediate life, where I live at, they feel that Israel is in the right. And that and that and that makes me upset. Right, and, right. and I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how popular I with the, are and with them anyways. And I just kind of want to make a peaceful exit. <laughs> you have to pick your battles. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. No, I hear you. I hear you. And you know, and it's funny because uh, you're doing doing what I do. I came to Roanoke, and right away I jump into Occupy Roanoke. So I I, I came here as a you know a, a rebellious hippie already as it was, and then within Occupy they found out I was this metaphysical, awake and aware, conscious dude. You know, and I'm starting this whole like chemtrail awareness within the Occupy movement. And they're like, oh Lord, you know. <laughs> So I get, you know, everything kind of gets compartmentalized. You know, I have my spiritual friends, I have my activist friends, and sometimes I have my my one or two awake and aware friends that I get to hang out with on occasion. But um, it's always compartmentalized. I, it, it is a dream that one day we will all live in a world of awake and aware people, but it's going to take a lot more work. Yeah, and, and sometimes I, I feel that uh, at some point, you know, some people aren't necessarily ready to hear what you want or, or want to eat that, what, what you believe in or what you say. I mean, I do have discussions uh, with some of my friends, you know, and I will push the boundary on things. Go, well, what if this or what if that or, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bring these uh, topics to the conversations. But, uh, you know, some days uh, I feel that, uh, number one, I don't have the energy for it. And, uh, and, and, and number two, I feel that I'm talking to somebody who is not even ready to even contemplate it. So, you know, it, it's, it, you know, isn't that, there's that, there's that other side of the coin where, um, you know, okay, for example, you've talked about this, about, about, uh, and, and you know, um, the esoteric arts and, uh, you know, do what, what thou willst as long as it harms no one. Right. 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 Okay, but, you know, there are people who are in power right now that we point a finger to and you go, you're manipulating us and you're forcing your ideals on me and I resent that. Um, at the same time, you want people to evolve, but you want to allow them to also evolve on their own where you're not also forcing your agenda on them. So there's right. there's two sides to the coin yeah. in, looking at, in, in looking at the bigger picture and how we're all going to, you know, wake up because we do live in a world of free will. Yep. Yep. And that's, you know, and, and this is a, oh, thank you. Uh, we just started a whole new topic here. I love this. The idea of, you know, what is your role as a friend? Uh, yeah. and dealing with uh, with those that you love and, and the world at, at, at you know, at the world at large. And, you know, when it does come down to it, the world has its, uh, I don't want to say it's not predestined, but it has its own destiny, if that makes sense. I, I do believe that the planet is uh, the planet Earth is a spiritual being within itself. I do believe that uh, she is vibrating at a higher level of consciousness, which in turn is going to help us evolve and, and at least consciously evolve and vibrate at a higher level of consciousness. But at the very same time, we are here out of free will. We are here to live in free will, and we are dealing with um, a power structure that manipulates us, social engineers us, uh, impresses us through emotion, through guilt, and all of that. And it's really up to us to, I guess, when we're ready, uh, you know, there's that, you know, there's, of course, uh, throwing in that mythology of, you know, the light workers, the indigos, the rainbows, everyone that's incarnating here, kind of like, you know, ourselves doing what we do with our radio shows, trying to get the information out there. I think that's kind of where our role is. And, you know, I even say it in my book, everyone has their own lesson to learn. We cannot impose our will on another person. They have to go through it in their own time. Um, I, you know, 
as far as being around people that are always always being around people that are awakened, that might be a little boring, you know. Well, uh, <laughs> sometimes it's you... never happened to me. I mean, I haven't. I mean, I have in the sense that uh, I, I get to be here on the show and talk to you and Treva and and uh, you know I have certain friends that I have very uh, you know great dialogue with and sharing them information and like mindedness and and you know Revolution Radio just you know the chat and some of the yeah, people yeah. That I've met through here you know um, I'm I'm so so grateful for that because. Uh, I'm like, because I need it, you know, yes, yeah. uh, but, but, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, what is it like? I mean, I feel that in some ways, you know, I have family and friends that they don't know yet. And then, and then I, then at the same time, I feel compassion, like, well, okay, I'll, I'll let them, if they want to know, or I'll spill put over here. And if they want to know more or they open their dialogue, you know, I, I've had situations where I thought somebody was closed off and then six months later they're talking to me about what I was trying to talk to them about six yes, months ago. Yes, and so, I love that. Yeah. And I love that. And and that's the thing. It's that maybe our role, our role at a specific place or a specific time is merely just to uh, uh, plant a seed of thought for the future for them to contemplate. Yes. You know, it's, I, it's, it's like, I know from doing comedy, you know, you, you assess your crowd and you fill them out and you know where they're going to go and not go. And so you play with your idea as far as you can to pry it open and hopefully pry it open as much as you can. Uh, you know, and then you have that audience that came to see you and they know you're going to talk about it and they dig it. But there's not always that situation. That's how I relate it to it in my head. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. That's very, very true. And, and I love what you said about, uh, you know, that you, you speak about something to a friend or a family member and then several months later or even several years later they're talking to you about the very same thing and you're like well that's what i was trying to tell you yeah, yeah. I, there is a little bit of i mean there is courage that is necessary to to be the the one who's saying it or to be the one who is is, is speaking the truth that's not a, uh, that it that goes against the grain of the collective thinking and the and the programming Yes. Yeah, there is there is a backlash to that, and not everybody goes. Oh, you're so what? And people attack you, <laughs> and they're not nice about it. Yeah, it's very it it's very well for me. I, I not to sound. I don't want to sound like I'm a sad person or anything like that. But it is a lonely path. It's a lone path, not lonely perhaps, but lone. It's a very singular path. At least it has been for me because I have found that many people, let's say within my region. You know, in the Roanoke Valley, I'm, I, you know, a lot of people know me from the radio shows and from my roles in Occupy. I've been on paper. I've, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm the secretary for the Roanoke Diversity Center. I do events. I've been in parades, you know, so I, I'm, I'm pretty visible in the community. And uh, when, when I see people at social functions or whatnot, one of the things that is very common that I am told from these people is, Thanks. Thank you so much for saying the things I don't have enough nerve to say. And I'm yeah. like, well, I'm trying to encourage you to say them, so start saying them. You know, <laughs> thank you for saying what we're thinking. Thank you for being courageous enough to do that. And and you know, the reality of it is, is that it 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 makes you popular on a grand scale. Like, thank you for for being the one to put your head out there. Uh, but on a personal level, I mean, it, my closest friends think that I'm always negative, that I'm always complaining or or this and that. And it's like, no, I'm, I, I just don't stand for injustice, whether it be to another human being or to myself. And and I just I have to say what I'm feeling. I have to say what I'm feeling. If I'm seeing that for a great example, uh, recently the um, the World Cup. Man, this whole area was up in arms about the World Cup. Yay, yay, yay. Everyone's going to World Cup parties and World Cup, World Cup, World Cup, World Cup. They fell for World Cup fever. And I'm like, I, I don't want to go. Do not invite me. I'm not going. No. And I would run into people socially that are like, oh, are you going to the game? La, 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 la. Yay, Brazil. Yay, America. Yay. I'm like, do me a favor. While you're celebrating, I would tell them right to their face. While you're celebrating at that World Cup game, can you please just wear a black band on your arm for all the people that lost their own homes, people that were killed, people that were murdered, the indigenous people who lost the land so you could have this World Cup series? 
And they'd be like, oh, you're so right. You're so right. Of course, nobody, of course, wore the black bands. But, you know, <laughs> they're like, oh, you're right. I didn't think about that. You know, oh, I'm, I'm like, yeah, you've thought about it because you're on my Facebook page. I know you're seeing me post this, you know. <laughs> but, you know, so again, you know, it's like you're the one voice of reason, I guess, for lack of a better term. And uh, it's it's a hard game to play. It is a hard game to play, but you know what? It's so worth it. It really it is, is so worth it. it. When you get those emails, when you get that friend a year later to come back and say, oh, my God, you were right. You were so right all along. I have um, – I'm not going to say which one. I have two best friends that I grew up with. <laughs> and recently, one of my best friends said to me that I grew up with who totally thought I was nuts and didn't listen to anything and actually really never even pays much attention to my work uh, say to me, you know what? You were right. You were absolutely right. I see it now. I see the corporate corruption. They really want to manipulate us. Uh, I see what they're doing to the to the environment. I'm gonna I'm gonna go work and and try to you know I'm gonna go to this uh, uh, summer experience to help save the you know the Everglades or whatever. You know, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, talk about someone who I never ever thought that you know. Anything I say is going to be wrong, and that's usually the way it is with the people that are closest to you. You know, everything you say is wrong. It's like, ah, it's just Bernard, you know. <laughs> but uh, when they say, wow, you were right all along. I mean, talk about, wow, that really made my life worthwhile, thank you. And it really does. It's like, it, it makes it so rewarding, you know. <laughs> I get the same thing. It's like, oh, that's Terry. She's, you know, she's yeah. always like that, you know. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I guess so. But I'll stand in the corner. No, I mean, again, I, I don't want to seem that I'm, I'm not courageous because I'm, I'm, I'm still you're doing. You're courageous. Doing... You're getting on stage doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty fun when you when you do it that way. Uh, but again, you know, sometimes it, I mean, I'm I'm used to rocking the boat. Uh, you know, I mean, I am used to that. I'm used to standing on the edge. And to be quite frank with you, some part of me really likes it, <laughs> you know, uh, and I, you know, I have some, some attract en enjoyment of it. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's the backlash is some it is sometimes tiring for me. So I've got to do things like be in water and meditate and, you know, release and let that negativity yeah. off of you and, and not, and learn to not take things on a personal level. Because it, it, you know, it, it, it's it's strong. I mean, you know, energy and words. I feel like they smacked you in the face with it. <laughs> oh no, I get that absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And you just get used to it. it you know, I, I'm actually I'm so glad you brought it up because this was this is a reminder of something that happened to me last week, and 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 I'm going to share it. I'm going to share this on the air, even though it's a very private, intimate moment. Um, we were doing. I was teaching my um, Earth Spirit, the GIC group that we have here in Roanoke. And we were doing an exercise to contact our higher self, okay? So here we are. And, of course, you know, I'm doing – I'm guiding everyone through the, through the process and through the energy work and whatnot. And, uh, but there came a point where in the, uh, in the process where we were supposed to ask our higher self a question. It's like, okay, if there's something that your spirit and your soul really want to know, you know, turn to your higher self and, and ask them a question. And uh, my question was, um, how much longer do I have to live in sacrifice and not have the happiness that other people do? And I was referring to, you know, a, a, a different home, a car, a, 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 you know, a husband, you know, family, you know, things, you know, the the norm, you know. It's like we all still lo want that, you know, that uh, yeah. that perfect relationship and, you know, that – that uh, large family around you and whatnot. So I and I. So my question was, you know, how much longer do I have to live in sacrifice? And my and the answer was, you are not living in sacrifice. You chose this path. You are doing the work that you are here to do. But that which you think you are lacking will be fulfilled in other ways. And that smacked me in the face. I was like. <gasps> Oh, I get it. I get it. So because I thought it was sacrifice, it is sacrifice. But if I look at it like I am just doing the work that I'm supposed to do, and I am going to get that fulfillment of family through other things. I get that fulfillment of family with uh, the GIC team. I get that fulfillment of family with the uh, 
family of friends that I have. And as far as lovers, well, I can take one and leave one and whatever, but, you know, <laughs> I can go back to doing that one night stand thing I did in my 20s, you know, but, <laughs> oh, no, no. yeah, I, I, even though, you know, but maybe that's what I need to do. I don't know, it's but, but it's, a, it's just a different perspective. I need to have a different perspective is what yeah. it's saying. Don't look at it like you're sacrificing a home life, a family life, a, you know, a, a, you know, a, a, uh, you know the the happy life that we all want but you are doing the work that you're doing and you will have that that balance so yeah it is it i did feel like i was sacrificing i i you know a good example was me moving into this place was to get away from my office you know or to have a separate office you know i felt that i was shackled to my desk now, here I am, I have a bigger home, but I'm still shackled to my desk, but at least I have room to walk around now. But <laughs> So, you know, it, it's, it, it is what it is, what it is. The desk is bigger. Yeah, right? I have more of an area to pace now when I, when I get upset at Facebook, you know. <laughs> but, um, it makes a, but it does make a big difference, you know, it makes a big difference, and uh it, it, things yeah. have been getting better for you. I mean, I've, I've noticed that the, the last few months, uh, donations have been really good for uh, the GIC, and it doesn't. It feels that like you're not suffering, and and that I mean, and and it that inspires me because I go, well, but, if it happened to Bernard, it can happen to me. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, or us. I mean, we. I mean, I'm. I feel like I'm. I'm participating with the GIC and and, and everything, but and the security of it. But but it, but to see things get better. Um, to to us um, is 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 a good sign. Even even when you say, well, the economy is this way or that people have this way. No, people do have. There is support. It's just uh, you know allowing it to happen to us. Yeah, and, and in different ways, other ways that we weren't expecting it. Yes. You know, it does come in different forms and in different ways. Absolutely. It's getting there, and it 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 only gets better. It only gets better, as they say. Well, isn't there something called the Trevor Project that says that it gets better? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Don't Kill Yourself uh, Project. Yeah, it gets tom- tomorrow's another. Well, there it does get better. It's another day because it, again, you look at something and you go, everything that we experience is still temporary, right? So you know, even the the the, the times that are difficult, you know, at some point it's going to pass. It's not your eternity. Uh, well, yes, absolutely. And I think that's very important for everybody to hear is that, you know, there we are all we all we all go through difficult situations. I go through emotional situations, Terry does, everybody does. And it passes. It always passes. We and that's I well, that's one of the keys to consciousness is to knowing that it is merely emotions and thoughts and that they eventually they're gonna pass. They will, you know, they might have raised and reared their head. Uh, for a few moments, but it will pass, and it does. You know, time heals all wounds, and we cannot become victim of one particular negative situation and and fall back on that all the time. You know, immediately uh, people get traumatized by one thing, and they're like, "Oh, there it goes. It's happening again. Oh, it's happening again." You know, you're you're uh, you're disrespecting me. No, I just said something that you might not have liked. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing, but uh, it's all good, and it keeps getting better. We have, well, we have less than a minute here on uh, this particular segment, so let me just uh, take this opportunity to let you know that um, next week, actually, is going to be my monthly uh, consciousness talk. It'll be a four-part series on consciousness. Um, I'm in the midst of writing it right now. I don't want to get into too much detail of it and give it away because I don't know what the title of it is until I finish writing it. But it will be a four-part series. Uh, it will be broadcast live here on Revolution Radio next week at 8 p.m. And then the following week. Oh, well, we got a break. We'll be right back. And now, back to your host, Bernard Alvarez. And welcome back to the Just Bernard Show here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. Uh, just before we went on the break, I was just telling you a little bit about some of our upcoming shows. And we've got some really great shows coming up in August as well I wanted to tell you about right now but while, while I have a moment. Uh, we are going to be having uh, energy healer Chris Kaler is coming back. And that's from your neck of the woods, Treva. 
Uh, Chris is going to be talking about different uh, types of energy work that can be done. He's done some incredible uh, stuff with some of these uh, wonderful, well, I hate to use the word gadgets, but I don't know what the correct term is, uh, but some great stuff uh, with Chris Keller Alternative Healing. As well, we've got, and this has been a long time, I haven't done this with her since before we went on Revolution Radio, Kathy Bilski is going to be coming back uh, the second week of August, and she is going to be doing a live shamanic soul retriever retrieval on the air. I'm really excited about that, and Treva, I don't know if you remember that show. That was really awesome. So I cannot wait to have her come back on. I miss Kathy. I haven't had her on for quite a while now. And yes, Kathy is a host here on Revolution Radio, but you guys know her as uh, a radio host. I know her as this wonderful, wonderful healer, and uh, she's going to be doing this live shamanic soul retrieval on the air here with us. So that's going to be really awesome. Um, And then, of course, we'll have a roundtable discussion and another consciousness talk um, but so going back to our discussion here today, um, Terry, we were talking about the uh, the idea of, um, you know, being a truth teller, being awakened and being that one to put yourself out there. I, I feel that, you know, I have there's a meme going around of a quote that I said uh, saying that uh, once you're in line with your spiritual nature, that social action is inevitable that you, you need to come out and say something when you're really aligning with your spiritual nature and your own spirituality. I feel that that's a part of what uh, some people call the ascension process. And I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about that with you guys today and see what your ideas were. You know, I remember back, geez, what was it, the late 2000s when everybody was, you know, all big and big into the, you know, Galactic Federation of Light and, uh, you know, 2012 and all this stuff was going on. And I remember the definition of ascension was like, you know, oh, we're just going to like dematerialize and move into this other realm where everything is perfect and beautiful. And, you know, that's what the Galactic Federation was telling us, you know. Uh, There was actually the, um, uh, I saw an article recently, they're like, you know, the Galactic Federation is not going to come save you. You have to save yourself. And I can't agree more. Uh, this whole idea of, um, you know, you know, someone's going to come save us and we're going to, like, turn into these energy bodies and, and, like, ascend. That's very similar to, you know, the biblical, the crazy, well, I am going to say that crazy notion that people are just going to, like, start floating up or something like that. I do you, do you remember that, Terry, when everyone's all yes. going on about that ascension thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, and when I was first waking up, I was I was listening to a lot of um, Galactic Federation of Light yeah, um, too, channeling. Of and, you know, I, I, I got, you know, some of that was going on and, 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 and you know, be like, you're going to go to your light body and then you're going to drink some, li- all you need to do is like maybe have a nutritious type of liquid that we all drink up here, <laughs> you know, just kind of. <laughs> stuff and you're like oh wow okay you know you're that sound pretty (laughs) yeah (laughs) what does it taste like you know um, you know everything tastes good here you know (laughs) yeah the the ascension stuff that i was hearing from the galactic federation of light back then was was like we're going to be building these ascension machines and you're going to put your body in it and it's going to like ascend you it's like the merkaba machine they were calling it no, these are like we're gonna build like physical, real machines that oh. that'll that'll like like destroy your body, and you're gonna be ascended. I'm like, uh, I was like thinking that doesn't, and my my gut was 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 trying to trying to tell me that doesn't sound right. Right, that sounds like something that well, I'm sure that gave the uh, truth movement a, a lot of fodder. It's like, oh, a uh, you know, what's that? A, a fake. Uh... A fake invasion type thing, but mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, you know, f- and, and to be realistic and to be metaphysical and to be mature about the idea of ascension is to say, for me, and again, this is only my interpretation of it, but f- for me, the ascension process is a part of the awakening process. Um, perhaps it's fair to say that uh, first we go through this awakening process where we learn to have compassion for our human family. We become a little bit more aware of our 
innate psychic abilities and we begin to develop our intuition. Uh, we become very active in, in, in balancing the injustices of the planet and bringing those uh, who are willing to listen and to the awareness of what is happening, uh, to be there for each other, et cetera, et cetera. But I also feel that uh, that's just the beginning aspect of it because, you know, there are many stages for me as far as and have or I've already gone through many, many stages of my awakening process, uh, everything from the conspiracy aspect to the political aspect to the metaphysical, magical um, aspect and the esoteric, et cetera, et cetera. But eventually, I believe that all of this information has to come into alignment with your physical body. Because you will, I, I do believe you're going to go crazy if you just focus on one thing for too long. You know, if you're worried about the New World Order, you know, rolling tanks down your street every day, you're going to freaking go crazy. You know, or if you believe that, you know, the government is listening to you and has a uh, recording your dreams or, you know, or the fact that, uh, you know, we need to ascend and stay into a meditative state and only think happy thoughts and the law of attraction only, only, only love, love, light, light, light. That, that's not balance. That's not balance. Uh, so for me, I believe that the ascension process is happening. I believe that vibrating at a higher level doesn't only mean vibrating at the highest level and staying there all the time. And it's funny because here I am, geez, uh, 20 <clears throat> years later, and I remember one of the first lessons that I got from my one of my spiritual teachers about shamanism, my shamanic teacher, said to me that the true shaman learns to keep one foot on every plane of consciousness, the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual. So that is, and here I am 20-something years later saying that's it. That's what it is. It's being allowed to be in the physical body. It's being aware of, of emotions, enjoying emotion, allowing emotion to guide you, not to rule your life. And as well to be in that spiritual, metaphysical, uh, ascended uh, consciousness that allows us allows you the ability to have compassion to think in the in the singularity of oneness, but also be an individual. Uh, you know that was one of the big uh, debates back in the day. Oh well, you want oneness? That's good. That's the new world order. No, 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 no. Oneness is about oneness of of awareness of oneness but still having that individuality to have free will and that that's kind of where i'm seeing this ascension process thing going i believe that that ascension is just evolving into a higher spiritual being but yet still being grounded and planted within in this this world um somebody said uh recently i well i'm seeing it a lot lately uh per, what they call it purple purple pill activism or purple pill uh, spirituality and they're saying it like it's a negative thing um i happen to like going out and eating a really good meal at a nice restaurant i can't afford it you know maybe i'll save up for a little while and i'll go out maybe once a month to do it but i do like it um i do enjoy um relaxing uh and watching a uh Oh geez, I'll say it out loud: a, a soap opera on on Hulu. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's relaxing for me. It takes me away from my work. That's almost twenty four hours a day. Um, you know, I, I like love. I like sex. I like beer. You know, these <laughs> these are not bad things. Now, if you now, some people call that purple pill truth or purple pill activism or something like that or purple pill spirituality. Uh, because I'm not a vegan and I only, you know, I only, um, I'm not meditating and I, and I haven't given up media or something like that. You know, we are here to enjoy life. And I believe that's one of the biggest lessons that I had to learn on my particular path. That my ascension has brought me to this place that, yes, we are here to raise our vibration. We are here to expand our consciousness. But in that expansion of, of expanding my own consciousness... I learned that I am incarnated in a body for a reason, and that is to enjoy this body. Um, again, anyone who's aware 
anyone who has higher consciousness and anyone who's gone through the these awakening process, of course I am not going to go shopping at Walmart. Of course I'm not going to eat McDonald's every day. Of course I'm not going to have Coca-Cola products in my house. You know, that's that for me that goes without saying. You know, of course I'm not going to put, you know, saccharin or aspartame in my food or drink it or anything like that. Of course, living consciously is one thing, but still allowing yourself the 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 opportunity to enjoy this life is really what I feel is a part of the ascension process. As we move on, I see a world without aspartame. I see a world without the Walmarts, without the Monsantos. But I also see a world with the technology that allows our life to be pleasant and pleasurable and, you know, have the opportunity to... You know, I like nice things. I can't afford them, but I like I like nice clothes. I like leather couches. You know, there's nothing wrong with having good taste. You know, I don't want to buy it from you know Walmart, but you know, or you know, I don't want blood diamonds or anything like that. Of course, I like diamonds. I've never had one, but I'd like one. You know? <laughs> but you you understand what I'm saying? What do you think, Terry? Where am I going with this? Does it sound like I'm going off onto another tangent, or no? I mean that that's one of the reasons. That's one of the reasons what attracted me to uh, to the GIC uh, was that uh, the fact that you you seem like you're you know I'm not, we're not monks. You know, it's it's not like you don't live in in, in the physical plane on 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 some level and. And that you're not, you know, I mean, I per- personally, I, if you want to know how I feel about sexuality, I feel sexuality is connected to our higher self. And Definitely. Our spirituality. And that's the, one of the big secrets. It's like we're, 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 we're connect, we're, we're losing connection through, um, you know, our root chakra all the way up to our, our crown chakra and, and what kind of energy actually is manifested in, in, in that way. How does that cause things to change? I think that's part of the, part of it, because obviously the people who are doing it, uh, you know, using sex magic or whatever to create their thing. Yeah, they're uh, using it. Obviously, something's going on there, and a lot of our religions are cutting us off from from that particular uh, energy source, uh, and and it's being used in an, in an objectified fashion, and it's used for commercialism or you know, to, to, for whatever. It's just so so grotesque. It's been, per- it's been perverted, to put it right. lately. Yeah, and human relation is. I, 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 as well, uh, but uh, no, I, I, I agree. I, I feel that that it, it, it's an awakening process, and and not to realize that you actually live. We still exist in in in, in this physical plane, and to have a nice meal, or I mean, I'm not vegan. You know, I, I am getting sensitive to animals though you know I, i've been living around chickens and stuff and then they follow me around and i go oh my god i'm a chicken whisperer and, oh no <laughs> you know i mean it was, you know they go how's it going guy and then i go to the store and i go oh i would have eaten that you know i mean i i have, right, to have right. those kind of things but that's my own personal i haven't given it totally up i mean there's some days that i feel that my body has not transitioned to be able to not need to have a certain amount of protein that's coming from animals um, you know, if I feel that there's a, a point where I don't, I don't need it anymore, or I've, I've learned how to eat differently and all the way, and I've made that commitment, there's sometimes where I don't eat meat, and there's sometimes where I do. There's sometimes yep. where I'm with my family and we're celebrating, and there's meat there, and I don't really have much of another choice than to accept it in some ways. Oh, I'm going to go over here and eat a bunch of potato salad because I can't have anything else that's on 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 the menu here. <laughs> Well, you know, and, and, and well, that's a whole other issue in itself, the eating the diet thing, because I do believe that our bodies crave, our spirit works through our bodies, and we do crave certain things. A good example, I mean, I posted on Facebook the other day, I, had, I made spinach pie. I wanted, I didn't want to eat meat that day. I was like, you know what, I don't want to eat meat today. I'm just going to make a spinach pie, and I've been eating that spinach pie for two days now. Now, tonight, I'll probably have pizza, you know? <laughs> With cheese, you know, but uh, the reality of it is that I believe our body tells you what it is that you're needing, if you need iron, if you need protein and whatnot. Now, to go to the whole political aspect as far as like factory farming, that's a whole other issue. Yes. Uh, I I do my best to buy organic, free range, blah, blah, blah all the time. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm so grateful my local grocery store has now this organic line and they're moving them to their deli. So I have this like organic uh what is it like um 
uh, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, humane, you know, turkey or whatever it is. But uh, yeah, I got humane turkey in the fridge. I'm very happy with that, you know. <laughs> and it does taste different, I will say. It tastes better to me. But um, the reality of it is that you can't do it all at once. And I believe that's a part of the ascension process. It's knowing what you can do and when you can do it. A lot of people feel and get frustrated in this process because we want it all tomorrow. You know, I, I, I just had a conversation with another activist from uh, from Europe who we work with and is good friends with the GIC that was getting very frustrated because, um, you know, he feels like we're not getting anywhere. And I'm like, we are getting somewhere. But we also have to realize, I do realize, I should say, you don't have to, but I realize that the work that I'm doing, I'm not going to see come into complete uh, fruition in this lifetime. I know that. I know that in 25 years, we're not all going to be uh, living, you know, green lifestyles and uh, all loving each other and in compassion. I look at the last 25 years. It's not going to happen that quickly. But we're working toward it. I'm working toward it. People are consciously becoming more and more aware. And I do believe it's a generational thing that this world is going to ascend generationally. We are getting better. We are becoming more compassionate you know, and and well, I don't want to get political here, but a, a good example, a good example, is um, and I know a lot of people really hate this, but I don't. Uh, uh, Obama signed the uh, the anti discrimination act for uh, LGBT people, uh, uh, people that work for the government. There is no, there can be no discrimination for LGBT people if they are going to work for the government. I'm like, well. You know, it's a crumb. Don't get me wrong. I know it's only a crumb. I know it's only a crumb. But would that have been able to have been signed 20 years ago, 10 years ago? You know, we wouldn't be there. We wouldn't have had this ability. People are waking up. People are moving into a place of compassion, of oneness, of understanding. And we are, in the meantime, all of us are bringing out the corruption that is happening within our government. We are waking people up to the idea of, I don't want to say the new world order, but <laughs> the old world order that is dying off. <laughs> They're becoming aware that this, there's this old idea of that, you know, the, the few can run the many, and people are getting over that. So it's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. Ascension is a personal path, but it's also planetary, and um, it, it's happening. It's just happening. Do you Do you feel that... Well, Bernard, there's something that you, when you said about um, Obama's, you know, I feel that some people are going to like this, but I like it. The fact that, you know, um, Obama signed um, it so that, that uh, gay people cannot be discriminated in the workplace. What I feel that isn't that what the con what being America is, you know, that 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 all individuals had all rights. They're not they're going to be discriminated by um, a religion, which is which is what oftentimes, you know, makes, uh, you know, it, it falls under the category of, of being gay, being immoral. I don't understand that argument. I what also bugs me, and I want to say this really quick, mm -hmm. is a lot of the New World Order, you know, people who believe in, you know, and again, I do believe that there's a New World Order agenda. Mm -hmm. But this whole, the, the gay issue comes up as being this Luciferian, um, you know, unchristian thing that's being put upon the merit, uh, uh, put upon people. And, um, and, and that bothers me. It bothers me uh, uh, to no end. That that, this, that 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 the gay issue is being thrown into being part of the new world order issue. When when we are thinking about being expansive individuals and being and, and loving everybody, how does that fall underneath that the whole Christian no. aspect of it? I'm like they're coming to get us, and we're going to go into our bunkers. And it bothers me big time, big time. Well, the reality of it is, and this is the way this is my uh, perception of what's happening there with that little aspect of the truth movement that's like oh you know the gays are coming gay agenda gay agenda right. you know? for me you know what that means that means they are still being controlled by organized religion oppressive control that's new world order control right there yes they're the ones that are being controlled by believing that being gay is luciferian Anything that suppresses another individual's being uh, right to be themselves and not harming another person, any type of oppression, is New World Order. So if, if you're in the truth movement and, you, and you're believing this right-wing religious garbage, you're the one that's fallen for it. Sorry, 
That's why I say it. You have fallen for the scam. Hate, divide, hate, divide, hate, divide. It's simple as that. They're the ones that haven't woken up. Well, they think they've woken up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you they, know, and I'm, you know, and I. Well, and you I, know, a lot of that came from Alex Jones. A lot of that came from Alex Jones and his little southern bigoted self. But uh, unfortunately, you know, that's where a lot of the truth movement started. But if you've noticed, people like a, a good example, thank God. Uh, for Luke Rakowski, who moved on from that camp and is doing so much better work. He's doing great work. I'm seeing him tour around Europe right now. He's posting on Facebook. Beautiful stuff, talking about love, talking about coming together, talking about oneness. You know, Alex is a, is a, is a fossil. I'm sorry. He's his last decade, you know. <laughs> but people have come out of it. I came out of it. A lot of people in the GIC came from that Alex Jones mentality, and we've moved on because... He had the right. He had the right uh, story, and he's got the right uh, information. But when he's putting in his own right-wing religious bullcrap and insecurities into it, that's you know people are starting to see that now. Yeah, they are. Absolutely. Anyway, Terry, we're running out of time. I hate to say it. <laughs> that went by fast. That went by too fast. Anyway, all right, we've only got a few more seconds. So, why don't you tell us real quick who's coming on your show this Friday? Well, I have to admit, I am still, um, I, I still don't have my guest yet. Okay. I, have a guest, I have a guest for August 1st. I'm, I'm wanting to have, I'm going to give my friend a call. Uh, his name is Robbie Jeanette. Um, okay. I'm hoping to have Robbie Jeanette on the show. He's so a, what time and what day? Friday at? Um, we it's, I'm um, Fridays uh, on uh, from uh, uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, it's the Freedom of Joy show here in Revolution Radio. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening, and thank you, Terry and Treva. We love you guys. Uh, we'll see you next week. Have a wonderful week, everybody.